joint workshop took place immediately after the MOU to facilitate the development of proposal based on mutual research interest. To further strengthen collaboration, the NALAB's NASDA Joint Research Program was launched for the first time in 2020 as a funding facility for our collaborative projects. The 2021, uh, sorry, the 2020 call for proposal resulted in the funding of three joint projects, which will be presented later in this session. Following the achievement of 2020 call for proposal, this year, NALABS and NASDA agreed to host this info day, not only to promote the upcoming program in 2021, but also to serve as a collaborative platform for both Taiwanese and Thai researchers to meet and exchange ideas. So I wish you all a great success in discussion in the next hours and also your collaborative works in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lily, for the remarks. Next, we are privileged to invite Dr. Bua Wen Ling, Vice President, NALABS, to, lead, to deliver an opening remarks. Please, Dr. Bua Wen Ling. Contribute to research involving Taiwan Beta Q for land use analysis, lung cancer detection, and COVID-19 research. NSPO and the NECPEC will present the progress made in their research on land use for KD fields. Through the application of the satellite data provided by Taiwan Data Field. Likewise, Theory and the Biotech are developing land based uh, electronic chemical methods to get, detect EGFR mutations of tumor cell in lung cancer while also working on a separate project involving the rapid screening of COVID-19 through real-time electronic chemical reverse transcription mediated by the thermal applications. All these efforts and more are a glimpse into just several of future uh, medical and scientific issues of our time. Such research helps bring together scientific work from across our dedicated institution and other teams, as well as further uh, deepen the cooperation between Taiwan and Thailand. For this and much more, we are filled with hope and determination for the next step of, of our cooperative project. Thank you, and the next day's meeting be an auspicious one. Thank you very much, Dr. Bo Wenling, for a wonderful remark. Now, it is time for us to share with you on introduction to NALABS, NASDA JRP overview. Kindly allow me to invite the first guest speaker, Dr. French Ming Zhu Sheng, Director General International Affairs Office, NALABS to introduce on NALABS funding mechanism. Please welcome Dr. French. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lili and uh, Vice President Lin and all researchers. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Fan Chen and I'm very glad uh, to represent uh, NALABS International Affairs Office uh, to give you a briefing uh, on this uh, uh, info day. And in my presentation, uh, it's only five minutes, but I would like to show you some of the updates of the NALABS, and then I will introduce uh, our funding mechanism. Can you show the slides? Please, cha cha. Yeah, next, please. 
I have two pages to give you an update uh, on the uh, recent development in NALEX. Uh, <clears throat> recently, uh, actually later uh, of this month, uh, in southern Taiwan, we will launch another uh, project. Uh, that will be a, in a saloon, Smart Green Energy Science City. As you see in the, in the uh, map, uh, there is a sea, and up there is a, a red area. That red area is the uh, high-speed rail station in Tainan. And now uh, this big area will be one of the uh, one of the portion of, of a project very similar to uh, the EEC program uh, in Thailand. This is will be this will be the uh, 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 science-based uh, industrial development and based on the uh, southern Taiwan. So we will form a corridor, and this is part of the corridor. So in here, uh, in this uh, region C, uh, we were dedicated uh, to smart and green technology, especially for smart mobility, smart health, and smart living. So in this area now, uh, as you know, we have the Taiwan Car Lab, which is already been in operation. And another building in Cyber One, this has been erected uh, recently, that will be launched uh, next month. So in here, uh, we were basically uh, used to for uh, R&D and for validation of uh, smart technology with the environment of uh, cybersecurity. So, uh, so uh, in this area, uh, we will also um, invite the innovation and the incubation teams uh, to join us uh, in this area. So one of the features that uh, for these startups or companies uh, to come to Taiwan, they can make use of our uh, research and development uh, facilities to help uh, expedite the prototype and also the commercialization. Next page. Next page, please. And uh, uh, just uh, last week, uh, is, we have uh, two activities. Uh, one is the uh, uh, Taiwan Trade and Economic Office uh, visited uh, NALEX. So as you see in the center, uh, on the right hand side is uh, President Wu, and on the uh, left mid center uh, is the uh, ambassador, Tong Tai. So he visited us and uh, we exchanged ideas on uh, our collaborations uh, in Thailand, and he got his uh, encouragement uh, on, on our, our progress. And on the right hand side is the uh, MOU uh, signed with the uh, Spa. And as you know, uh, Taipei Spa, uh, there are three uh, science parks in Thailand that has been uh, in this association. One of them is the EECI, the innovation part of the EEC uh, corridor. So the, <coughs> excuse me. So these are the uh, recent uh, activities that I would like to uh, update. Next page, please. And then I will move on to uh, our uh, joint research program. So as uh, Dr. Lili just mentioned, uh, this title should be 2021 uh, for the uh, program. And uh, following the last call, because the uh, original uh, plan is we have three projects uh, in each year. So uh, this call will be uh, for the project starting from next April. And as I know now, we have one project that will continue on uh, until then. So we, uh, in this uh, new call, uh, there will be two projects uh, at most. And each project, uh, as we have agreed, uh, 1 million baht and uh, uh, 1 million uh, NT dollars uh, will be uh, granted uh, for each project for each year. But actually uh, in Taiwan, uh, we allow the researchers uh, to uh, propose uh, a raise uh, of this uh, limit. So if uh, the reviewers agree, uh, it can be uh, beyond this number. So this is uh, for your information. And then uh, the project duration usually for our call will be uh, one to two years. 
And uh, the project date, uh, as we have agreed, it will start uh, each year uh, from the April 1st. So, uh, and the next is the common schedule that we propose uh, each year we have a mutual visit. And uh, this will be shown uh, in a later chart, then I will explain a little bit uh, later on. And for the, uh, <clears throat> every uh, March, uh, just like now, uh, we will support uh, the uh, NASA annual conference uh, by holding a workshop uh, to review uh, the progress or the results uh, of our project. And uh, uh, the last uh, uh, role uh, in this chart is uh, our tentative program field. Uh, I think this is uh, to be discussed uh, to see if uh, in the in the coming call, if we want to focus, uh, it's a limitation of, of several fields uh, that can be uh, uh, discussed. Okay, next chart. And this is the uh, review process uh, showing both sides. On the right hand side, uh, our process is a little bit uh, easier. Uh, we will uh, announce the poll uh, in uh, October 1st, and uh, uh, we will have a proposal evaluation uh, in November. And before, uh, usually before the Christmas, uh, we have the, uh, the, the uh, pre-selection uh, that can be uh, discussed with uh, uh, the executive uh, in the NASA. Uh, so we will hold the NASTA and the NALEPS uh, JRP uh, steering committee, and then we will decide uh, which uh, projects uh, to support. So before the end of the year, we will announce, and starting from next April 1st, then we will start a project. So uh, this is how we review uh, the pro projects. Next, next page, please. And and after the execution, uh, this is what we propose. Uh, as you see in the first uh, in the first row, that will be the uh, joint workshop. So if uh, NASA NAC is going to be held annually, then uh, we we are considering uh, every year we will have a, a support uh, in March to Thailand. And in the other way. Uh, we will propose uh, the, the Thai delegation uh, to visit Taiwan uh, later uh, in the in the in the uh, September or in October uh, time frame. So this is uh, my proposal. But if uh, we want to reduce the frequency, that is okay. That we can uh, discuss uh, later. And in the uh, later on. Uh, in the uh, project period, if you see the uh, green bar, uh, last year we have started. So uh, because uh, we did not have a uh, uh, agreement on the uh, time to start, so uh, we have uh, uh, two projects. Uh, by the time they are not uh, aligned, <clears throat> so we expect that uh, if we have this. Uh, 2021 call, then we can start uh, the projects in uh, 2020. Uh, in 2022, uh, starting from April 1st. And the last role is uh, the, the uh, interim review uh, for, for NALEX. Every uh, six months, uh, we will have a uh, review. So that has been set in uh, June and December. So that will be the, uh, the the schedule for us uh, for the interim uh, review. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's my presentation uh, from another uh, side on the uh, round funding and the review process. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. French, for your valuable information on NALAB's uh, funding mechanism. Uh, moving right along, may I invite Dr. Lindley Uwilajit again to introduce and present on NASDA funding mechanism. Please welcome Dr. Lindley. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. You can hear me okay? Okay. Yes. Thank you. So thank you very much for the presentations, very clear. And uh, actually, NASDA also have a, quite a similar uh, process to NALABS because we always discuss on this uh, you know, process to make sure that this will be uh, synchronized well. Um, but I just want to point out that, you know, after the, the researcher have the match project and then they will develop proposal today, uh, uh, together and then they, they submit the proposal. So once they submit the proposal, we will send it to the external reviewer. We don't review it internally. So we just, you know, send it out and uh, to make sure that this will be also, you know, uh, include the excellence in science as well. And then we will have, you know, do we do ranking and decision by the steering committee between NALABS and NASTA. And later on, we do the co-announcement of these awards and then project starts. And the timeline will be uh, synchronized with NALABS, of course. Next, please. And... Um, for this, uh, just because some researchers also ask like where the budget's from. So we actually, from NALABS and NASDA, we agreed to set aside the budgets for collaboration, 3 million baht, and uh, maybe the same amount at uh, NALABS as well, 3 million uh, uh, yuan, right? Is it yuan? <laughs> and, um, and then- $20. The, uh, dollar, sorry. Yuan is Chinese, sorry. Uh, dollars, yeah. And- um, Yes, and uh, about one million per 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 uh, about one million per year per project. So, and this project will be um, given for the period of not more than two years now because of according to our MOA. Next, please. Um, so, with the our agreement that we want to collaborate uh, on. The seven of them are the topics that we agree to collaborate from the from the start. So you can see there are like var various projects that uh, topics that we want to uh, work together. And then each year we will select from that, or sometimes we have some new topics uh, added as well. But it's still related to to uh, to what we discussed earlier. Like today, we also have opportunity for researcher from both sides to maybe also suggest what we want to work together and that can be added here. Um, and with under the collaborative platform that we agree from the beginning, uh, there are more than just joint research projects. Of course, we could encourage our researcher to have exchange um, uh, activities uh, among researchers from various labs from NAS labs and also NASTA, and they can do workshops, symposium, and um, uh, you know the, do the technology uh, transfer and uh, commercialization. That would be even better. Uh, and maybe some researcher might ask like where they will get the funding from. Of course, from NAS labs that you can ask for, uh, Dr. Franz for that, and for NASTA. Uh, INCO or International Co Co Collaboration Office also set aside some funding for this kind of activity. So you could uh, propose, send a proposal to us for the non-research uh, projects to do such activities that I just mentioned. Okay, I think that's all. That's all from me for now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lily, for your informative information. Next, it is now my pleasure to introduce six guest speakers to present and share with us on Crandet Joint Research Program of 2020. Please allow me to invite first the first team, Dr. Nopadon Kiri Pet from NECTEC and Dr. David Chang from NSPO. The second team, Dr. Prakaput Kumwan from Biotech and Dr. Wei Chen Huang from um, TIRI, and the third, three, the third team, Dr. Wan Sadet Jaren Ram from Biotech, and Dr. Wei Xiaohu from TIRI. 
please welcome our uh, three teams. Uh, for our project, the petty fuel detection, I like uh, Dr. David from NALAB to present first, and I will follow uh, for the next five minutes. Please, David. Okay. So, uh, can you show my uh, presentation file here? Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone here. And uh, um, uh, uh, right now, I'm going to uh, present uh, our current status of our project, Petty Field Land Use Change Detection using uh, Data Cube. Actually, uh, next please. Next page, please. Actually, this project is a three years project. The first, especially for the first year, is uh, to establish open data cube uh, uh, framework for uh, and that can be used uh, for uh, for uh, net net peoples. And the second year is uh, to establish. Uh, no, <laughs> please go go back. Okay. Mm. The second year, year's project okay. is uh, a pilot study, okay. set up a pilot study area for uh, test our uh, method uh, delivered in the first year. And the third uh, okay. year is yeah. uh, country level uh, testing for our whole uh, uh, environment. Uh, next page, please. Uh, next page. So uh, right now, this is the uh, uh, data cube system. We, uh, uh, has been established uh, for uh, Thailand, uh, uh, for native peoples in Thailand. Uh, in in this in this uh, environment, uh, we have uh, actually we have uh, three uh, three system here. The first is uh, uh, automatic data acquisition server, and then is a uh, uh, server data cube, and then. Next and the third one is a, a private data cable for, and that can be used by Italian peoples. And uh, uh, actually, in this uh, system, we all uh, everything is integrated in uh, NCHC. Uh, uh, our NIAS actually that is a super computing environment to uh, operate the whole system. So, so and next, please. Next page, please. And the uh, uh, very important one is we have a data uh, automatic acquisition server here to uh, prepare all the satellite data automatically. In this system, we have to uh, integrate three uh, uh, jobs here. The first is uh, data query and the downloading. And the uh, next one is to integrate uh, and uh, data integrate, uh, data integrated verification. And the third one is data ingestion. Right now, the three jobs here uh, can be carried out fully automatically, and uh, all the data can be uh, downloaded and ingested to our data cube. Uh, okay, uh, next place, please. So uh, right now, uh, uh, in our data cube, we already prepare uh, all the uh, Semino 2 satellite data uh, from uh, 2019 to, to now. So right now, uh, all the data, data volume is around 7.41 terabytes. Uh, and th th there is a table under the slide that you can see that the most current data is already uh, put in uh, our data cube. So I think uh, all the analysis can be uh, carried out smoothly with our data cube. Uh, next, please. Next page, page please. This is a very preliminary study using our data cable to uh, detect petty rice areas for Thailand uh, area. And actually, we uh, here we use uh, the, the uh, money temporal and uh, money temporal uh, satellite data here to detect the petty rice uh, area here. Actually, the, 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 okay, this is almost a half years uh, half years data and. Uh, uh, we can uh, detect uh, the, uh, the temporal change of land and then uh, the find where is a pretty rice field. Uh, next page, please. So this is uh, uh, the, the result detect, uh, detected from uh, uh, our data set. Actually, that is uh, part of data in our data cube. 
So uh, from a different period data here, you can find uh, the area uh, circled by uh, yellow boundaries is uh, detected the rice here, rice, uh, petty rice field. And uh, actually uh, here we use uh, uh, two periods data to uh, find uh, where is the uh, petty rice field. So uh, here is uh, my part of uh, uh, presentations. So uh, please, uh, uh, so no, uh, Dr. Nopana, please uh, report your part. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, my slide, please. Okay. Yeah, thanks again, David. And I should put your name here too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just saw that uh, only, only my name here. But you are very uh, helpful, okay, to uh, let us learn and help us set up the open data queue, which is very new to us. Okay. So the activity that has been done during the past uh, six months uh, already will be according to, to these uh, items. Okay. You already mentioned about the Taiwan Cube that you uh, set up for us. Okay, the benefit of this cube is, uh, is that there are many many benefits, but I think there are two folds. First, the setup that uh, you help us will let us learn. Okay, the cube, the cube itself, how to configure and how to uh, replicate the same configuration on uh, our server okay, in Thailand. And second, we don't have to wait for our cube okay, to be ready. We can play and experiment with the data in the cube that you set up for us. So that's very helpful. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on Thailand side, with limited time and limited budget, I uh, and my team set up the similar configuration here, okay, not, not that big, not as big as Taiwan, but we have uh, many, many nodes, okay, including the database, according to this configuration, of course. Um, for the experiment, okay, by the way, the first year, we will focus on the data cube technology, not the petty field detection, okay, but anyway, we can experiment on some small uh, farms or some small portion of, of the uh, petty field. Since I already have the rice, okay, land usage from another of my project called AgriMap, I can select that, okay, this part of the province, actually we provide you another data set too so that we can compare, okay. This is the petty field in Supanburi, Thailand and the area According to that window, it's about uh, 200 square kilometer. Okay, 200 square kilometer. We have to choose two periods of the data as well. So I choose the period before, okay, before the petty field is sold. And another one is when the petty field is very fully grow. Okay, fully grow. And by the way, in Thailand, we found another problem which is the cloud coverage during the rainy season. Okay, the satellite cannot print the cloud. We cannot see anything the whole year. So this data is taken uh, for the off-season rice, okay, off-season rice or canopy, okay? And of course, we do the chain vector analysis based on the NDVI and our AI. And our preliminary result, okay, which is not too bad, not too good, but not too bad. We have the accuracy uh, first at about 75%. Okay, we can tune it up, we can investigate and play some algorithm tuning. Okay, and, but, but we will done that later after our cube setup is more stable and probably we learn how to remove the cloud or use some other technology. Anyway, I think the problem that I just to point out some of them, okay, we, we play a lot with this region a lot, but in different regions, okay, there might be different period for, for the chain vector. And how can we obtain that two periods automatically, okay? Next, 
the threshold selection is very important. Of course, one threshold will not work for the whole country. Okay? How can we deal with that? And again, the most important thing is the cloud. Okay? Um, David already mentioned that we might use some, some microwave radar, okay? satellite that could penetrate the cloud, and that would be another challenge. And of course, the scalability, we just do a tiny portion of petty fuel, but for the whole country, that's quite a challenge. Okay, that will be all of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, thank you for the first team. Um, may I invite the second team of Dr. Prakaput and Dr. Yi Wei Xuan Huang, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me well on the Taiwan side? Yes. Uh, it is my um, first of all. I would like to appreciate my um, uh, appreciation for the INCO to organize these events to for let us to share uh, the uh, um, experiences working with the Taiwan theory team. Um, we actually first met in NAC 2019, and um, when we got a chance to develop a proposal to detect uh, tuberculosis. And from that point on, that eventually led to the, um, the uh, development of the current project, which is to detect lung cancer by uh, real-time LAM technology. Um, I am Park from the IBST team, and I'm working um, closely with uh, Martin Huang and Joseph from the Siri team. Um, so why, can't, why lung cancer at all? So it, there is a clinical need coming from both sides of the country. So Taiwan and Thailand has um, one of the leading cause of death in cancer-related deaths, which is lung cancer, um, in 2018. Um, so when you typically see lung cancer, we often associate lung cancer with um, a heavy smoking habit. But it turns out that uh, uh, it turns out that one third of the population who have lung cancer actually have uh, what's called non-small cell lung cancer, which is a type of lung cancer that has an underlying cause in genetic mutations, surprisingly. So um, more than half of those, of those people who have a mutation in this particular gene uh, called uh, epidermal growth factor receptor, or EGFR gene, uh, is more likely to develop a lung cancer in their lifetime. So um, why is it important to know the mutations? Is because modern chemo drugs were developed to target the expression of these genes. So knowing mutations prior to treatment will help uh, physicians to um, guide or um, uh, design uh, the right drug regimen for patients to um, receive the right dose and regimen of the chemo drug. So currently there are three um, mutations that people would normally type for, which is mutations in exon 19, exon 20, and exon 21, all of which are in the EGFR gene. So um, again, knowing this mutation prior to treatment will greatly help physicians to design the drug regimen um, to help patients um, uh, respond well to the drugs and eventually eradicate cancer from their system. So, but the problem is that the current standard in detection for uh, uh, in mutations of this gene is still relying on uh, next generation sequencing, which is a really um, specific because it allows you to see a point mutation in these genes. But it also comes with a price because the cost per assay for NGS is, can be as high as uh, 30,000 bahts. Um, that is not the highest thing. It's because uh, the setup cost for NGS is typically around 4 to 8 million bahts, which, is, which means that not a lot of hospitals can afford to buy it. And uh, sometimes you have to even send patient samples to get tested in centralized lab, meaning more time and more labor um, and more cost eventually that, that patient has to bear. Um, there's also real-time PCR analog of this assay that allows you to detect um, mutations in these genes. Um, there is a clinical, a commercial clinical assay um, from Kaigen that has um, qPCR assay um, that is cheap, as cheap as 200 bots per assay. 
but again, um, instrumental cost for PCR is really expensive, and again, not a lot of big hospitals in Thailand can afford it. Um, you're probably familiar with uh, qPCR because it's a technique that is ha that has been used to detect COVID-19 nowadays, um, and still we still um, can't afford to um, buy a lot of qPCR machines. So. This leads us to um, um, the product, the Kunder project, because um, when the Taiwan Thierry team comes in, they have this amazing uh, electrochemical platform that is really 10 or 20 times cheaper than the uh, qPCR machine, while having the same uh, uh, cheaper price than, than qPCR. So with what this means eventually is that we can do um, more hospitals can buy can afford to buy this technology and do in how analysis so that patients don't waste time uh, patients and doctors don't waste time and effort. Um, it also means that more follow up can be um, done in a routine analysis, um, and that means that doctors can now monitor um, the levels of mutations in the patient system as the, uh, as the treatment progress. So no effort wasted um, in this treatment. And eventually, economically, uh, it will save a lot of million, uh, billion bots in, in the long run. So um, we have a clear task for uh, Taiwan and Thai side. So the uh, Thierry team will be responsible, uh, responsible for um, uh, developing this uh, or translate uh, this assay into uh, electrochemical uh, format. And also, they also have this technology to harness, to harvest um, circulating tumor cells from patients without uh, using any invasive uh, invasive uh, procedures. That is often done like liquid biopsy, uh, like a tissue biopsy from lung that has often, uh, has often been used to, um, to determine the mutation. So uh, having this liquid biopsy or circulating tumor cell will be uh, really beneficial to the patient um, outcome. And we on the Thai side or biotech side, we are responsible for developing, uh, again, real-time LAMP assay for exon 19 deletion detection and two SNP mutation in exon 20 and exon 21. And eventually this platform, uh, this assay will be translated and validated on the uh, real-time electrochemical platform by the Thierry side. Um, currently in, uh, in our lab, we are um, optimizing the assay and is uh, close to finished in terms of optimization wise. Um, and we are about to um, preparing materials to send um, for initial validation to Taiwan. So we hope that um, we would get also the um, CTC or circulating tumor cell sample that the Taiwan side has been collected from three hospitals. So uh, Joseph or Martin, do you have anything to add to this project? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. It's your okay. Uh, uh, I would you know I will introduce the second part is the two uh, progress of the two part. Uh, Uh, I okay. I'm Martin. Uh, I'm Martin Huang, and uh, I will introduce the two two progress of the two projects. And the first, uh, we will introduce the electron chemicals detection data. Uh, next page, thanks. Uh, today I will introduce the three part. One is the uh, lung cancer's mutation gene, and the second part is the uh, TB's mutation gene. The third part is COVID-19 detection's uh, theory. And uh, next page, thanks. Uh, I will introduce the lung cancer in Taiwan, and the lung cancer uh, incidence uh, uh, in Taiwan is highland uh, average, uh, 16%. But uh, interesting is uh, in Taiwan, uh, uh, get the lung cancer, you don't, uh, you didn't know smoking uh, below the uh, average 22%. Okay, thanks. Next page. And uh, we guess, uh, we guess uh, some, some gene mutation in uh, some people so they can easier get lung cancer. So we propose we want to get the circulation tumor cell from the blood, and uh, this uh, purpose will be easier to diagnosis and prognosis prediction and disease monitor. And next page, thanks. 
So we call a rate the company. The company will use the, to capture the CTC from the blood and separate and purify the CTC and amplify the whole genome. And we use the bio sensor to detect the mutation gene. And this purpose can be uh, perform the either diagnosis and prediction and disease monitor. This is our purpose. Okay, next page stand. And this data will show the company also used antigen antibody to capture the CTC and uh, perform the whole genome the uh, amplified subgia and uh, they get uh, the sample to PRI to detect by the electron chemical data. Okay, next page. So I will introduce the electron chemicals the theory. Uh, if the reactions put the results in pop, uh, we can give the potential, we can get the current. If our genes uh, amplify, the rotation side will play or insert to the double strand. This time, when this time the current will decrease. So we can see the right figure after normalizations. The black line is the negative control without the temp, uh, nucleotide temperate plus me. So it only the primer, so they can any any signal. And the uh, other lines is means the DNA will amplify. So we can see the signal will decrease. This is electron chemical data. Okay. Uh, next page, thanks. So why we can use uh, why can detect the gene mutation in the short time? Uh, we use the lamp technique. Uh, this data you show uh, we use the same copy number and we compare the lamp and the PCR technique. And uh, at the copy number seven, we use lamp. We only need uh, 30, 33 minutes to detect. And uh, copy number five also. But uh, we use the PCR. We can see copy number seven is spent uh, 21 minutes. If you use the low uh, copy number five, spend a lot of times uh, about uh, 44 minutes. Uh, this is why we use the lab technique. Okay, thanks. Okay, next page. So I will I will start to introduce our data for the lung cancers. The mutant uh, mutant gene is EGFRLO5AR gene. Uh, the first uh, we will the ability to establish the uh, gene detection platform. We hope the mutation will faster than the wild type and the negative control. The, in the stability assays, the, the green lines mean the wild type. Uh, sorry, green lines mean the mutation type. And we also use the fluorescence the detection to detect. Uh, we, we, we always uh, usually to look the mutations is better than the wild type and the negative control and finally is the electron chemical machine to detect we also find the uh, mutation is the blue line it will decrease and uh, about the uh, uh, 35 percent so uh, this uh, we establish establish uh, three method to show is the trend is the same is the uh, mutation is better than the wild type and faster than the a net control. So this is our EGFR data. Next page. And uh, we also detect the uh, analysis genes is ELK. ELK, we also use the same method to establish. We also find the uh, uh, mutation is faster than the wild type and uh, the native control, but and uh, the electron chemical data also uh, decreased uh, uh, 15%. Okay, next page. Uh, Finally, uh, we also use the uh, true detect TB's genes, IMH gene. We also use the same method to detect. We also find the uh, mutation genes uh, also faster than the wild type 
and the, in the negative control in the stability assay, fluorescence assay, and the electron chemicals assay. Okay, next page. Thank. Uh, finally, I will, will introduce the COVID nineteen the best detection theory. Uh, as red circle is mean the uh, have the uh, two colors. Blue color is the uh, blue color and the purple color is mean the uh, coronavirus. And uh, and the SARS CoV and the SARS CoV two and the MERS will infect human. We will uh, have a uh, damages disease. So uh, we so we will detect this coronavirus. Yes, next page. And uh, we want to use the engine of the SARS and the COVID-19 to, to distinguish the coronavirus. Uh, the first, uh, we want to distinguish the SARS and COVID-19 because uh, this uh, genome is very similar, about 90%. And the red, the red uh, region is mean the difference, dramatic difference is not a, its difference has many facts. So it, it cannot identify. So we, I will use uh, this uh, red part to design the primer and uh, they can distinguish the SARS engine and COVID-19. And next page. And uh, COVID-19 engine uh, to VS the other coronavirus, they cannot alignment or blast. So if we, I can, if we, we design the primer, we also can distinguish the other coronavirus. And next page. So I will give a summary. In this case, uh, electron chemicals data, uh, our data, uh, electron uh, data will faster than the turbidity assay and uh, the Electron chemicals state has time is better than the fluorescence or something case is similar to fluorescence assay. And uh, in the COVID-19 engine, we will use uh, to distinguish uh, COVID-19 and the SARS. And uh, I think it can, it can easier to uh, distinguish the others coronavirus. In the future, we'll keep it to test about checks the sample including the TB, lung cancer, and COVID-19 with the electron chemicals assay. Next page. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for the second team. And now may I invite the third team from Dr. Wan Sedet-Jeren Ram from Biotech and Dr. Wei Xiaohu from TIRI, please. Thank you for the introduction and good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I am Wan Sadit Zalun Ram, a representative of my team working on uh, the project Real Time Electrochemical RT Lamp for COVID 19 screening. This project is supervised by Dr. Wan Sika Ket Patong Chai, who is currently giving a talk in the other station, and Dr. Joseph from our lab site. The project lasts for one year from November 2020 to October this year, and is won by Nico from NASA and apply NAR Labs iDream project. Okay, let's down to business. The common question is, do we really need to have a new COVID test kit since WHO has recommend RT-PCR already? And this question is really uh, common and we got asked so many times back in the day we start this project and it come to my attention that people in general have no idea about the limitation of real-time PCR. So let's have a look at this information and you would get understand more. Um, over 15 months that the whole world has lived with COVID-19, this infectious disease has killed over 2.7 million people and infect over 125 million individuals and counting. Unfortunately, this number is um, way underestimated. It's simply because broad access to testing is limited by the current diagnostic, which is real-time RC-PCR. 
The real-time RT-PCR is endorsed by um, WHO as the gold standard for detection of COVID-19 because it is fast, it is sensitive and specific, but because it is labor-intensive, complicated, and non-budget-friendly. This, this make it uh, suitable for case confirmation, but not screening or active case fighting, which we need the most nowadays. That's the reason why simpler and cheaper yet reliable test kits are still in need. And to address this problem, last year, we developed a test kit under the name COCM. Briefly about COCM, COCM is based on real-time um, reverse, is based on colorimetric reverse transcription loop mediated isothermal amplification or colorimetric RT lamp. This COCM has one step with endpoint readout format and need only a single and simple heating block with 75 minutes to perform taste and deliver the visible result with the sensitivity of up to uh, 92% at a cost of $5 only. And most importantly, it is um, approved by Thai FDA for commercializations and is selected as one of the 20, 20 world best COVID-19 test kit by XPRIZE Foundation. In conclusion, it is simpler and cheaper than RT-PCR, but as a tech developer, we always look for room for further improvement. And from this feature, it would be better if we could shift the endpoint readout format into real time, um, shorten the detection process by half, and enhance the sensitivity from 92% to over 95% or equivalent to real-time PCR format. And in search of a new technology to fulfill this mission, we found electrochemical real-time lamp developed by NAS lab, highly potential to this end. And because Dr. Yi Chen Huang and Dr. Park Puk already mentioned about this platform, so I won't go into the detail. But what I would like to summarize is that this platform consists of three main components. The lamp reaction, certainly, and the second one is in-house redox probe. The third one is real, the third one is real-time in-house gene detector. For the gene detector itself can perform LAM and simultaneously and automatically detect the presence of the redox um, electrochemical signal in lamp reactions and report in a positive or negative readout format in real time on an LCD. And with this concept, um, they can detect salmonella down to one cell within 30 minutes, which is really impressive. And we hypothesized that if it worked with salmonella, it should work in the same way with COVID-19. So <clears throat> NAS lab has really to use ELAM format and IBST lab uh, from NASTA had a strong track record in LAM application and can provide clinical samples. So we end up joining hand to establish this project with the ultimate goal to, to develop a more practical and affordable COVID-19 test kit whose sensitivity match that of real-time PCR based on electrochemical real-time LAM. And to achieve this goal, the experiment, the project plan is divided into two phases. Phase one is about um, designing, selecting, and developing the standard real-time LAM. And this phase is carried out by biotech site. Um, so far, we designed multiple primers from multiple genes and optimized for their conditions and found the best fit protocol, which is 65 degree for one hour incubating in either heating block or thermocyclo. And with this protocol, we can detect um, COVID-19 down to 100 copy per reactions with no cross reaction with other viruses, including um, flu A, flu B, uh, RSV, MERS, SARS, and common bacteria found in daily life such as E. coli and salmonella. Now we almost complete the first phase. We are preparing all material, including enzyme and synthetic RNA template to shift to NAS lab to kick off phase two. And phase two would start on, um, I think the first of April to the end of this year, if I'm not mistaken. 
We also include clinical validation into uh, phase two, but we will do this part both. Talking about the expected outcome, we expect to get one publication, um, one PD pattern if possible, and one prototype. And regarding the impact to the economy and society, because we expect that the proposed technology will be more affordable and more practical than the real-time PCR, it should be uh, suitable for both low and high resource setting and making the COVID-19 active case fighting or screening accessible to everyone in all economic backgrounds. This technology should be able to be established in state quarantine facility or part of entry, including um, airport or border check, school or gathering size, such as the market. And in conclusion, we do believe that both Thailand and Taiwan would gain the benefits from this project because both countries have been affected by the COVID-19 crisis and the project will serve as a stepping stone to tighten the control measures of this pandemic and also pave the way to further collaboration in the research topic that both countries are interested in. And the success of this project or the outcome would also showcase the use of um, real-time RT lamb in COVID-19 testing that could perhaps um, help gain the research momentum in Thailand and Taiwan, where exploitation or application of this platform hasn't been commonly pursued. And that's all for my presentation. And this project won't be possible without joining hand with NAR Labs and faculty of Tropical Medicine Mahidon University for providing us the clinical samples. So on behalf of my um, boss, Dr. Wansika Kepatomachai and IBST team from Biotech. Uh, we really thankful for having both of this party with us. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much for all the speaker um, to share your valuable presentation on Cranet um, Joint Research Program in 2020. Um, and before starting the discussion session, may I invite Dr. Sakun Khan Bunryung from Nectic to share the idea for 2021 project proposal. Um, Dr. Sakun Khan will be online. Please. Good afternoon, every. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Do you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. So, um, originally, we um, planning for Dr. Shu Han to present on this slide, and anyway, so we were talking about collaboration work with um, Dr. Jong Chao An. So the idea of this project is come from um, our current project doing a. Um, volatile organic compound of the consensus array for indoor monitoring. Um, we have the project ongoing in NECTEC. And right now we're in a stage that we want uh, for fabrication of optical sensor array. Originally we did the, the single uh, sensor and we did test with our different material and then test preliminary test with the VOC. For the second stage, um, we want to make the, the, the optical sensor array with a small feature size. And we know that um, NALAB has a facility on the nanoscale fabrication. That's why I contact uh, Dr. Shu Han. And Dr. Shu Han recommend, recommend me Dr. Zhong from uh, TR, TSAR. So um, the title of the proposal that we come out come with is a GMR-based sensing technology. GMR stands for guided mode resonance, which is one type of optical transducer. And the responsibility that we come up with a TSRI will in charge of uh, GMR sensing structure fabrication, um, which is might be um, direct formation or more fabrication. And also, 
TSRI has um, many of the sensing material that will um, give us some knowledge and provide this part for us as well. So next part, we will deal with the GMR design and simulation. And also we have platform of uh, VOC detection and as well as uh, data analysis outcome for this um, co-sharing. Um, I believe that TSRI will have GMR patterning uh, platform estimates over there and as well as optical material uh, processing capability. And for the tech side, we have a GMR design and data process methodology. Original of this application, we focus on the VOC detection or gas detection. Um, the application would be expanded into from indoor monitoring of uh, VOC emission as well as the biomarker from the bullet detection, such as uh, lung cancer, uh, which is usually uh, detected from formaldehyde, or the agriculture uh, monitoring, for example. So um, the timeline we were talking about, it's gonna be two years timeline. So first year, uh, going to be a GMR sensing design and fabrication. We target the pitch size is less than 400 nanometer. And we do try with a different material selection for sensing uh, material. And eventually at the end, we will validate the sensor um, structure with a single uh, sensing material, but different pattern in each array. The second year, we focus on integrate of the sensor array with the multiple material for detecting the, the VOC. And we will do the data analysis to be able to get the patterning of the signal of each VOC and be able to classify the data. And at the end, uh, meanwhile, we, we, we also, in NECTEC, we also, instead of doing uh, the, the, the sensor array, so we also doing a reader as well. We try to target the portable table development in the second year, be able to, to read the, the, the sensor array. And at the end, the second year will be um, uh, basically the, op the electrical optical e notes technology. Thank you. Any questions? Um, thank you, Dr. Sukunkan, for sharing the collaboration idea with Dr. Chong Song An. Um, now, we are pleased to open the floor for the discussion and matching. For the online audience, you can send your questions to our speaker by opening the Q&A panel and type your question in the text box and then select send. I will read the question to our speaker to answer your question. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions from Taiwan side? Yeah, we have no questions uh, on the floor here. Okay. Um, yeah, I think here is very clear too for us. And uh, actually, we I have a chance to discuss with like our researcher a little bit that we can see the platform of, of NAR Labs that some of that can go as well, and you know we can be developed. Uh, together with the work at NASTA as well. So we will we expect to see many more 
uh, projects like this. And uh, I think I think the problem is if we don't have much chances because of the COVID that we have no chance for our researcher to meet and uh, discuss in person. And I think that will um, be, be much better than this one. So hopefully next year we can have that. Yes. Yes, I echo your idea. Actually, uh, this week at the same time, we have the Smart City Summit and Expo. Uh, this is an event uh, held annually. And this year, uh, our Center for High Performance Computing and CHC, uh, they have uh, exhibition and uh, some other uh, events over there. And um, we can only uh, send you the invitation uh, to join online through uh, our uh, representative in Bangkok office, uh, Ms. Chachanan. So uh, I think if uh, the pandemic goes away and uh, the world, world opens up, uh, we definitely uh, would like to uh, invite you to come here or uh, we would very like to uh, visit you uh, in person. Thank you. And I think uh, meanwhile, the, the researchers who are uh, from online and, uh, you know, from Taiwan as well, if you are interested to, uh, you know, connect with a researcher from from NASDA or you know vice versa, NASDA want to connect with Taiwan, please uh, feel free to contact INCO and also to contact Ms. Chashanan at the NA Labs office because I think having NA Labs office here in Thailand helps a lot and we can see from the situation right now when we cannot uh, meet in person but we have like someone here that can closely uh, connect with the uh, you know NAR labs there, so I think that's very useful for. So for the researcher, please feel free to contact us, and we can, you know, we we'll we have more than happy to connect you know all all of the topics together and read be ready for the next call to be open. Thank you. Yes, uh, on my side, actually, uh, we will tell our researchers uh, the same thing, and actually. Uh, this morning, I got an email from a professor from the National Central University uh, because they learned about our, our cooperation with NASA. So he uh, wrote an email to me and expressed his uh, interest uh, to have a joint uh, collaboration. Uh, his uh, uh, <clears throat> personal interest is in the uh, AI. So I will contact him and then uh, we will talk with our uh, researchers, and then we will send information to you so that uh, we can uh, do a matchmaking. So hopefully uh, we can also connect uh, professors from our universities also. So uh, we, we would be very much uh, uh, willing uh, to perform this role. Um. That it seems that there's still no question uh, from the online audience. But anyway, if any online audience or the participant here have any questions, you can contact INCO and um, also NALABS at Taiwan side or the NALAB office in Thailand Science Park. And um, now we come to the end of the session today. I would like to invite Dr. Lily again to deliver the conclusion concluding remarks please welcome dr lily thank you so executives and personnel of NAR labs and nasda as today as today's event is coming to a close i would like to begin by expressing my sincere appreciation to dr bo wen ling vice president of NAR labs for your valuable support on today's event as well as researcher from Taiwan and Thailand for spending your day exploring and initiating some interesting idea that we can work together. We truly appreciate your time and effort dedicating to international scientific collaboration. In the next few months, I hope that both parties can freely and openly discuss details of the joint projects and concerns, as well as finding ways 
to overcome any challenges that our researcher may experience. Ultimately, we would like to see the success of our joint project and that our long-term partnership will result in beneficial innovations. I firmly believe that this certainly is a significant milestone for NAR Labs and NASTAR's collaboration in research and development. Finally, I sincerely hope that everyone will gain knowledge and benefit from this session to succeed in the upcoming NAR Labs NASDAQ call for proposals. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Pua Wenling to deliver the concluding remarks. Please. I also would like to thank all the participants for your excellent contribution to the success of today's meeting. Through the presentation and for fruitful discussion, I am delighted to know we have made exciting progress on all three joint research projects, and we have discussed a possible future research ideas. Many new findings and a research results even exceed our previous expectation. I'm convinced that through the close partnership between NALABS and the NASA, together we have a lot to offer to the uh, welfare and the prosperity of both countries. We look forward to meeting you face to face after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic to discuss future cooperative uh, projects. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lili and Dr. Po Wen Ling for concluding remark. On behalf of NASDAQ and NAR Labs, we would like to thank for your kind interest and participation. We do hope today's event will lead to the new collaboration in the near future. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.